Hi everyone, welcome back to Garden on the Moors. It's the start of May. I know, where's the time gone? But it is time for the next garden tour. So let's take a look around. Enjoy. The start of May also meant the end of chicken lockdown, which means they're now allowed out to explore. So um, they're having a great old time. There's some of the girls. They'll still be out in a minute. Although the magnolia's gone over, this azalea or rhododendron, I always muddle the two up, has come out in full bloom now. Look at the markings on that flower, it's absolutely gorgeous. So that one's holding the fort for us, whilst um, most of the things around here have gone over. There's just one flower I need to show you just around the corner there. A lot of the flowers have gone over in the sort of woodlandy, more, more woodlandy area. But I just want to show you this amazing flower we've got. This is a trillium. I actually forgot where I planted it, but it's here underneath the hydrangea. So, and it's looking lovely. We've got some, uh, different kinds of bluebells, uh, three-cornered leek, just there if it's going to focus, yeah. We've got a lovely patch of different bluebells here in front of our cherry, which is finished flowering now. I don't know whether it's going to set any fruit, but I really, it would be nice if it would, but I'm not, I'm not too hopeful. <laughs> It hasn't got anything to pollinate it, so we might have to buy another one if it doesn't. But yeah, I mean, those bluebells there are almost looking like the natives. They're not, they have obviously Spanish and crosses and stuff, but they're almost looking like it. This is one of my favorite spots at the minute. These daffodils are gorgeous. And we've now got the Aquilegia or Granny's Bonnet coming out. Beautiful. Inside the greenhouse, things are hotting up. No sign of the run of beans yet, but I'm sure they'll come. But we've just this morning started to get some germination on the pumpkins and on the courgettes. There's some other ones. I guess that's the first one. And the pumpkins are coming up, which is brilliant though. The others will not be too far behind. The leeks are looking brilliant. These sweet peas are still in here, I really need to get them out soon. Um, I just need to figure out where I'm going to put them, that's the only thing. The, I saw some lettuces, they're starting to come up. Uh, we've got a bit of slug damage there, but the others seem fine, so hopefully they'll be okay. The chard, still looking nice. And the dahlias have little shoots on them. It's always nice when you have kept stuff over winter like a daily tuber and it actually starts growing again because <laughs> it just looks dead but I think that's almost all of them so we've got six out of seven of the Calvin floodlight have popped up this one's still waiting to go and now all of the new ones I've bought these Cafe Olay Royale all three of those also have buds coming up which is brilliant figs are loving life and these little potatoes are doing okay Need to earth those up really, to try and get more potatoes out of them. And also possibly move them outside so we're going to get a bit more sun than down here. But we'll see how they do, they're just some leftovers so no, much, no too worries. And that's the situation at the minute in the greenhouse. This corner is so spring at the minute. We've got lovely last of the cow's lips and some of the three cornered leek flowering there, that little white flower. And we've got apple blossom. Absolutely beautiful. Nice big flowers, pink going into white. This is our Katie apple. Flowers all the way up. It says it's second year it's been here now, which means that we, if it does set fruit, then we can, we can keep it. So fingers crossed. There are lots of apple trees around and we've got another one as well. So um, hopefully it get pollinated. And then we've got the rhubarb. Doing okay. 
definitely couldn't harvest it this year, I don't think. Well, I wouldn't like to anyways. Give it another year or so. But yeah, doing okay. Something else that's doing brilliant are these raspberries. They are absolutely covered up in flower buds. Oh, I just, I really, really can't wait. Really, really awesome to see. Because hopefully, lots of flowers means lots of fruits. I am gonna probably need to put some sort of support in here because when they are laden with fruit, they're gonna be even heavier. So that's a job to do this month. I also what's really exciting is that you can see along the bottom there, next year's canes coming up already, which is brilliant. And just to the side, we've got the fox tail lily. That one's really happy. That's probably the best one we've got. Really cool leaves. I planted some crocosmia in the grass here. Uh, that's Mombusha, that, sorry, Lucifer, um, which is hopefully a tall one. This pear is quite happy. No flowers, but even if it did flower, we wouldn't be able to keep the fruit because it's its first year. And we've got a few other little flowers coming up here. I'm going to eventually make this into a border. And I'm tempted to put the sweet peas in there this year. Um, I want it to be really tall plants up against this wall. And then just to the side, we've got our sort of wildy area with a huge macrolegia. Gosh. And then just around the side, we have a flower bed. The daffodils have started to go over now. There's one or two still holding on. And the forget-me-nots though are still looking brilliant. There are a few weeds in here, but what I need to do is wait for the forget-me-nots to go over and then pull them all out and take out any other weeds. Um, that'll be the plan for those because I want them to set seed for next year. But lots of things are doing brilliantly. This um, the fofia, which I only got a few months ago, was doing really well. The scabious has got flower, well, flowers on it actually, not just flower stalks, which is really exciting. And the butterflies love those. Uh, they come round. What I'm most excited about are these irises. I love irises and they didn't do anything last year. They just sort of sat there looking pretty sorry for themselves. But I've got, how many of on there? Three flower stalks? There's another one just down there coming up. Um, this gorgeous daffodil. And another two on this one. The only trouble is I can't remember what they actually are, which is why I haven't bought any more irises because I need to figure out what exactly I've already got. Uh, other things that's doing really well is this peony. That is just absolutely loved it there. I think we only got one, one flower and one sort of, you know, leafy stalk, but this year we've got at least four flowers there. That has actually got some support in it. You can just about see that. But I put it on a while ago so that it's hidden. So that's really good. The roses have now got their flower buds. Oh, it's not focusing. Come on. You gonna do it for me? No. I can't get it to work. But hopefully you can still see all the different flower buds on those on this rose. And they're all the same. So that one's also got one there. We've got this Nephrophia shooting up a flower, which I think is really early, but I'm, I'm happy for it. No complaints there. And some more rose buds there. Which is really exciting. I love these roses. They, I got ones that smell really nice. So that's something to look forward to. Got some meadow sweet there. These cosmos is all doing really well. More different things popping up. All sorts of different things like uh, Alstroemeria, Rebecca, another peony. The ferns are looking brilliant down here. Coming up really nicely. And then just to the side of the flower bed is this amazing display of Solomon Seal. It's such a gorgeous plant. I'm trying to spread it across the garden because um, I don't really want it there as such. Um, it's fine there, but it's kind of creeps into the veg patch. So I'm starting to spread it out to the rest of the garden so that it's not just in one spot. 
but it's just amazing. It's such a nice architectural plant. There's some of the girls enjoying some foraging now that they're allowed out again. This bit behind them, or around them, I suppose, is the bit we don't cut, the grass we don't cut, I suppose. And we just leave it go because it's quite hard to cut. And also it means we get lots of wildflowers coming up. So we've got Vera on the left, Sally Ann in the middle. Blaney's just gone down the hill. And here come Bruce and Scotch. <laughs> I think they're worried they're missing out. The others are laying eggs and... Oh, they're just laying eggs. <laughs> so yeah, so they aren't out yet, but I'll, I'll encourage them out once they're finished. The veg is doing brilliantly so far, so good. The peas are up. And looking brilliant. Climbing up their little pea sticks. The second batch aren't up yet, but they'll come soon enough. These garlics still looking amazing. So are the onions. And then the other things we sowed, so that, that's all stuff from autumn that we sowed, planted, I suppose. And the rest of it's also coming up really well. So the potatoes are up. They'll need earthing up soon or covering over anyways, which is something I'll need to do pretty soon. <laughs> um, but they'll be okay. And then I've got some little broccolis, little calabrese broccolis under the netting here. So you can just see that one there. So hopefully that's a nice broccoli before long. And then I've got the space left for my courgettes. So there we go. This is our other apple tree. This is, I think it's called Captain Broad. It's a uh, local variety. Um, and it's also flowering, which is great because that means hopefully it will be able to pollinate our other tree. Um, this one we planted this year, so uh, any fruits we won't be able to keep on it. We'll just have to cut them off and uh, let it actually establish. And some really nice bluebirds behind, if I can get it to focus. And then we have our Japanese maples, which are all in leaf now. I just love the leaves on that one. And the colour on that is amazing. That one's not as vibrant as it was when it first comes out. That's just the way it is. And I've got a little elder tree there. The plan for these is, they're too close together. The initial plan was to make a hedge, but actually I quite like them just as standalone trees. So I'm gonna get this one in winter when it's dormant, take this red one and probably put it over by that wall there, is what I'm thinking. Um, Cause then we can enjoy them. And also that'd be another good spot. What they like is shade in the morning and afternoon light. So they get that from here, the sun comes up from over there. So they're getting good shade in the morning there to dry out the dew on the leaves before they get the sun. And that's the same that they'll get over there as well. So yeah, oh nice. That's our plum tree. No fruits in that one because it hasn't got anything to pollinate it. But I have bought a, got a second plum, which is just behind the veg patch. But it didn't have any flowers this year, which is annoying. You can just about see it in front of the ivy, just there. Um, so hopefully they'll pollinate each other soon enough. And I also need to take out this branch there at some point, just to even out. It had obviously fallen at some point, being on the hill, and was really leaning over. I didn't want it to fall, I wanted to keep it alive. So I cut it, I've slowly been cutting it back during the summers, and it's now resetting itself, which is great. And in a few years time, you won't even know that I've done the, done the work. But I just got that last up there. If I can get rid of that up top, then it'll make it all even then and won't, let it, won't encourage it to bend over or, you know, collapse, which is what I really don't want, especially when, when it does start getting fruit on it and it starts getting its heavy branches. Here are the peppers, doing really well. And the tomatoes, they don't look magnificent at the minute, but I know they'll come through, but they're doing just just well enough for the minute. As soon as it gets warmer and a lot more sun, then they'll be right away then. There we are. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give a big thumbs up and subscribe for more and we'll see you again next time. Cheers.